All right. So we're now back, no? And uh, this is the second uh, part of uh, Unit Four lecture on the life of Rizal. So earlier we traveled from China to the Philippines as we talk about um, uh, the background of Rizal's family as well as um, his birth and his early childhood. You know? And uh, we can see here that in his formative years, um, it was very much centered on education. Na, given their their social economic status um, his family put emphasis on the importance of education you know and um, this left a dent on Rizal himself that uh, he uh, voluntarily pursued um, tertiary education you no know? uh, considering that it was a norm and at the same time he was very much into learning yeah so now we resume our story when Rizal decided to not finish his medical studies in um, USD and uh, pursue it instead in Spain. So while the reasons are unclear, we are now going to travel you know, from the Philippines to Spain and uh, watch Rizal's life unfold in the continent of Europe. So all of the events in this particular period happened between 1882 and 1887. So here we label this as Rizal as a knowledge seeker, European sojourn and enlightenment, because this was the time that uh, he was exposed to, you know, uh, more political ideas, more political concepts, and um, he had seen it firsthand, you know, uh, considering that Europe back then was heading towards a very liberated formation of nation states. So, ano yung mga dinaanan ni Rizal no, from the Philippines? Well, the typical um, travel time before no, lasts around um, six months. Okay? Nung hindi pa nabubuksan itong Suez Canal. So, this is uh, where Suez Canal is. Ano. And um, dati ang travel uh, Philippines, ilalim pa ng Africa, akit ng Europe. Or in some cases, they uh, go through the Pacific. But that's more risky uh, because wala ka masyadong stops no, sa Pacific. Uh, dito, sa pag-travel na to, no, uh, mabilis yung pag-travel na Rizal. So May 3 to June 15 lang. no, So roughly two months. Or yeah, more than well, a month and a few days. no, And uh, ito ay dahil nga po sa Suez Canal. So tingnan natin ano. Uh, typically uh, ships docking from Manila no will eventually have a stop in Singapore. Usually mag overnight diyan no hindi lipat siya ng steamboat no kasi uh, hindi ganoon ka durable or kalaki yung mga steamboats from uh, Manila na nagde-deliver ng passengers to other areas of the globe no. So kailangan nagtatagal. So yun they stayed in Singapore for a while no and he was able to witness how the british um colonized no the port area so uh to this day there's a marker that recognizes he was once there no and uh, nagstay nga po siya sa kilalang raffles hotel then from singapore they traveled to andaman sea then to indian ocean then they had a stop in sri lanka no in colombo and in Colombo, he had this um, time to stay in this uh, diplomat hotel, if I'm not mistaken. And um, na record nung hotel admin kung saan siya nagstay, you know? And uh, they decided to name that suite Dr. Jose Rizal Suite. So that's 305. And uh, take note, no, yung suite na yan, presidential yan. So ganun ka importante yung uh, pagdaan ni Rizal sa Sri Lanka. Then after that, Yan, uh, pumunta na sila ng Arabian Sea, pasok ng Red Sea. Nagkaroon ng quarantine dito sa Gemna, no? sa, may, sa may Suez Canal, bago sila pumasok ng Mediterranean. Then, from the Mediterranean, they had a stop in Italy. And Rizal actually had a statue in Italy. Okay, and um, he landed in Spain. So, nag-Barcelona muna siya, where... Uh, a marker no of uh, of his work La Solidaridad exists there since dun nga po sinulat yon and he went to his um very destination 
Madrid, yung capital ng Spain. At uh, nandito sa Madrid yung tinatawag na Manila Avenue. And uh, nandito yung uh, statue ni Rizal, yung monument na similar to Luneta as well. So, along the way, of course, uh, Rizal had encounters with foreigners and uh, for people from all walks of life. And uh, definitely, it was um, a very wonderful experience, no? considering that uh, sa tagal ng biyahe mo, talagang uh, makikilala mo yung mga kasama mo maglakbay. Okay? So, at this part pa lang, talagang Rizal somehow gained uh, friends no? and uh, you know, uh, met new people. But of course, we will focus on Spain. What happened in Spain? Well, he first went to Barcelona. No, uh, Barcelona is a port city, and uh, dito siya dumating. No, from his very long journey, uh, nakalang siya ng very very unfavorable first impression, and uh, he wasn't that enjoying the no no the the planning of the city. Okay, it was here that his first nationalistic essay, Amor Patrio, Love of Country, okay, Rizal's first article written on Spain soil under his pen name appeared in print in Jaryong Tagalog on August 20, 1882. So he had this um, entry na, no, in Jaryong Tagalog and it was published there kasi, no, in Barcelona because there's a Filipino community. Now, the article was translated into, into Tagalog by uh, Marcelo del Pilar, another colleague of him. No? And ayun, uh, when his brother Pasiano learned that he was in Barcelona and not in Madrid, uh, si Pasiano sinulatan si Rizal. No? Uh, punta na siya ng Madrid, uh, doon niya tapusin yung kanyang medicine. No? And syempre, kailangan niya sundin ng kanyang kapatid. So he left and settled in Madrid instead. No? But um, his life in Barcelona was much more of you know adjustment phase no kasi nag-explore pa siya and dito niya na ano na pagpatuloy yung kanyang creative knack for writing now fast forward he came to Madrid and it was a very enlightening experience for him because he was admitted into not only one but two universities so student siya ng Universidad Central de Madrid no uh, under the medicine and uh, Philosophy and Letters course. Yan. And uh, nag-aaral rin siya ng painting and sculpture. So this is more of informal one. Sa Academy of Fine Arts sa San Fernando. So, all in Madrid. No? So double degree na siya. Tapos nag-aaral pa siya ng painting and sculpture. And of course, um, why wouldn't he do that kung kaya naman nila? Now, um, Rizal did not only learn subject matters no, about his courses, he actually was more exposed to the political scenes in Spain as he was exposed to other Filipino, Filipinos in Madrid. No? Yung mga kagaya niyang mga ilustrado. No? Um, middle, re, middle income or middle class um, young men who were sent by their families in Europe to study. No? Kasi mas maganda nga yung pag-aaral sa abroad. So, um, na-meet niya itong mga fellow Filipinos niya through the circle of Hispano-Filipino, Hispano-Philippine Circle, uh, and in occasional parties, no, nalalaman niya yung plight ng mga kapwa niya Pilipino. He also fraternized with a lot of other colonial subjects na nandun sa Madrid, no? like Cubans, Argentinians, Mexicans. May mga bar siyang pinupuntahan dito tapos nakikipag-inuman lang siya, casual na kwentuhan sa mga ito. No? And they share a lot of things about um, the colonies. Kasi by, by, that, by that time, medyo liberal na yung Spain. Ano? Pwede ka naman talagang uh, magsalita no? against uh, the government there. Now, um, dito rin niya unang mababasa no? yung mga kilalang akda kagaya ng uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Ano? Yan. And uh, dito slowly ma-realize niya na, na may paral- parallelism yung mga nababasa niya dun sa nangyayari sa Pilipinas. And he further had a very um, unfortunate experience kasi syempre um, nasa Spain siya, pinapadalhan lang siya ng pera uh, para hindi siya maghirap. No? He tried to spend less no? than what he should. No? Kumpara doon sa mga mayayaman rin na ilustrado kasi um, Rizal was considering a lot of factors. Ano? Talagang namuhay siya doon ng uh, higpit, mahigpit yung sinturan. 
So, ang naging solusyon niya, minsan pasali-sali siya ng loto. Yan, tapos uh, kung may excess money siya, bili lang siya ng mga mumurahing book, no? yung mga book sale. However, um, naapektuhan si Rizal ng event sa Pilipinas na nasa Madrid na siya. No? Uh, ito yung panahon na nagkaroon ng issue sa Hacienda Calamba. And I will not further discuss Hacienda Calamba because I will ha- I'll be giving it to you as an activity. Now, um, dahil sa issue na yon, tapos dumagdag pa dito na hindi sapat yung harvest doon sa hasyenda. No? At uh, siyempre nagkakaproblema doon sa kota yung pamilya ni Rizal bilang sila ay farmers, uh, landowners, no? or PCs. Uh, wala rin silang maibigay na, ano, no, na kumbaga parang tax sa mga Dominican. So, ito mga Dominican, naging mas cruel, um, tinaasan nila lalo yung rent sa kabila ng situation, and lalong nalugmok yung family ni Rizal along with the other residents of Calamba. So dumating sa point na hindi na mapadalhan si Rizal masyado ng pera, um, naging sobrang broke na hindi siya makakain ng almusal. No? And by, by the time din, nagkakaroon din ng mga student riot sa Madrid kasi as I was saying, it was already a liberal time for um, Spain. Now, sa kabila ng mga to, nag-flourish lalo yung exposure ni Rizal no sa mga political and ideological spheres kasi mas na na mulat pa siya no sa mga reality sa Europe. So, mas na exposed siya sa liberal ideas and um, he put that into reality when he joined the Masonic Lodge no called Acacia in Mad- Madrid. So, Masonry is actually an organization of intellectual men no who, who are bound uh, by fraternity and the belief on uh, liberal ideas you know, and the respect for each other's religion though they are ironically um anti-catholic in a sense yeah so nakahanap siya ng kakampi sa mga mason kasi they all agree that uh, the friars are bad people and that uh, these friars are the reason why the philippines is in a very very unfortunate state And uh, siyempre sa talino niya, naging grandmaster siya and he was able to de- deliver his only Masonic lecture to the group. no Now, uh, fast forward 1884, sa kabila ng dami niyang extracurricular activities, he earned his licensiate in medicine and uh, nakuha niya naman yung, ano niya, no? yung licensiate niya in philosophy and letters noong 1885. Kung saan? Distinguish siya as excellent or sobresaliente. Meanwhile, sa kanyang medicine degree, hindi masyadong flying colors kasi uh, it was suspected by some historians that Rizal did not really heartfeltly wanted to study medicine. Kumbaga parang mas fixated siya sa ano eh, sa creative uh, disciplines no, like writing, philosophy, ganyan. So, mas nag-excel siya doon no, at talagang nagagawa niya 'yon. Uh, with flying colors no whereas a medicine medyo passing lang but you know we all know that he still pursued his career and he became a doctor now um the moment na patapos na siya ng kanyang ano no doon niya nasimulan yung no limit ang hewe kasi naggo-grow na sa kanya yung influence ng mga nababasa niya and his awareness on social issues plus no the effects of engaging with a lot of other Um, you know, uh, citizens from the colonies as well as um, his other fellow Filipinos there in Madrid. So yan, 1884, tapos niya na halos yung kalahati. So imagine, no, nag-aaral pa lang siya, pag-graduate pa lang siya, nag-novel na siya. Now, we will continue his life story in France. So what happened no, after he earned his degree? What did he do in France? Particularly in Paris, you know, he went there for a summer vacation. Yeah. So imagine being broke and uh, still being able to go to Paris no, for a vacation. <laughs> um, hindi siya masyado nag-enjoy kasi namahalan siya. Sobrang mahal daw ng mga bagay-bagay sa, sa Paris. And uh, para makasurvive, kailangan niya mag-transfer sa cheap hotel. No? So... Uh, 
purpose din niya kasi dun sa Paris ay syempre para matuto pa din. So ganun po siya ka Porsigido. So he went to Paris to observe medical treatments to specialize in ophthalmology. So nanonood siya ng mga eye surgeries. You know? And uh, para mag-OJT, naging assistant siya ni Dr. Louis de Wecker. And uh, he was the leading French ophthalmologist of that time. So consider that, no? Uh, the leading French ophthalmologist, tapos ikaw yung OJT niya. Therefore, you must be good or you must be popular. So, again, uh, kita na naman natin yung other side ni Wiesel. Ano, talagang, he's one of the popular boys. Now, um, dito din sa Paris, uh, niya ma'am encounter si Nawan Luna, yung kanyang asawa, si Paspardo de Tavera. At uh, dito niya may makikilala ang napakahalagang kaibigan niya, no, na si Maximo Viola na napaka-laki ng role sa pagka-publish ng No Limit Akiwe. So, tinuloy niyo yung pagsulat ng Noli sa Paris, no? sa kabila nung hindi siya nag enjoy do sa situation. Then, he traveled to Germany after that. What did he do in Germany? Now, uh, Rizal left Paris for Heidelberg kasi gusto niya ipagpatuloy yung pag-aaral niya ng ophthalmology. And definitely one of the reasons is because a lot of good doctors are in Germany. No? So he worked for Dr. Otto Becker. Yan, nakilalang-kilala ng, uh, dahil sa kanyang association sa University Eye Hospital sa Heidelberg. And sa pagstay doon ni Wiesel, natuto na siya mag-German. No? So ganun siya na-immerse sa Germany. No, particularly sa Heidelberg. And uh, naging kaibigan niya rin ang isang Protestant pastor na si Dr. Carl Ulmer na magkakaroon ng major influence din sa kanyang um, thoughts about religion. He was so fascinated by the place that uh, he wrote a poem called the, To the Flowers of Heidelberg. And um, up to this day, I think Heidelberg University itself recognizes Rizal uh, by offering a course on Rizal, I think. May, may ganun program din yung Heidelberg. No? And uh, there are places marked uh, historically na napuntahan ni Rizal sa Germany. Then Rizal went to Leipzig, Leipzig in Dresden, no? which are also part of Germany back then. Um, he had this very productive stay and uh, kaya siya nagtagal dito no? kasi mas mura yung cost of living compared to other places. No? Kasi Primarily, it's because of uh, it's a lesser known city, and uh, it's it's not that crowded compared to you know Berlin or uh, Heidelberg or Paris. Kanyan. So, dito makikilala niya si Professor Friedrich Ratzel and uh, anthropologist Dr. Hans Mayer. So, dito magkakaroon ng influences siya sa no sa anthro and uh, history. And uh, he was immersed to German literature na tinanslate niya yung William Tell and Tales of Anderson into Tagalog. No? Despite the fact na hindi siya ganun kahusay managalog. Now, um, he became more engaged in anthropological studies. Uh, pagdating niya ng Dresden, nakilala niya si Dr. Adolf Mayer, na director ng Anthropological and Ethnological Museum, which meant that he will have access to you know circles of anthropologists Um, dati sobrang gold mine nun kasi maririnig mo yung mga thoughts ng mga experts na to no? um, since pwede ka makapasok sa mga circles nila and it was a very great learning experience for Rizal not only for his you know medicine um, studies ano, pag-aaral niya ng ophthalmology but of course for um, his uh, skills as a writer Now, here in Germany, he finished the remaining chapters of Noli but was bothered if he could publish it since no money came from Kalamba due to the crisis. So, one fact no, is that most of the money he spent are um, from his friends no, and, of course, from working. No? This is OJT na yun, na he's, he, he was compensated naman. But his family can no longer provide him that much allowance. You know? At uh, this point, um, uh, roadblock to Rizal's a dream of publishing Noli, considering na wala nga siyang pera. So, um, sa tulong ni Dr. Maximo Viola, no, madidiscuss natin yun mamaya, uh, mapapublish niya yung Noli. Now, after, in, after uh, going to uh, Leipzig and Dresden, no, Rizal went to the capital of Germany, Berlin. 
And he was so excited in going to Berlin because of the following reasons. One, sobrang daming ophthalmologists doon. Number two, uh, it is a city known for, you know, being so interested in science and languages. Uh, gusto niya rin ma-observe yung political and economic conditions ng Berlin since ito yung capital. No, ano yung politics doon? Ano yung lipunan doon? Uh, gusto niya ding ma-associate sa mga famous uh, German scientists and scholars. And of course, he went there to publish No Limitang Hewe. He worked for Dr. Ernest Schweiger, a famous German ophthalmologist, and became a member of the Anthropological Society, the Ethnological Society, and the Geographical Society of Berlin. Three organizations, Anthro, Ethno, and Geographic. No, imagine. So, ganun, siya, ganun kadaming time no, yung <laughs> si Wiesel, no. And uh, there, na-meet niya yung mga kilalang pangalan like Dr. Fyodor Hagor and uh, even the scientist Rudolf and Hans Virchow. So Rizal eventually admired uh, Berlin because it was very progressive. A lot of um, Germans in Berlin are very are believers of science, you know, something that he was so longing to see in other European cities, especially, siyempre, way back home no, in the Philippines. And uh, nagkawin siya ng isang magandang moment doon kasi he was able to present a paper sa mga German students and scholars, you know, about the Tagalog language. No? So, ipinagmalaka niya yung Tagalog language, ginawa niya ng talk, and um, yung talk na yung tinatawag na Tagalishe Verskunt. Okay, o Vers- Verskunt. Tagalog metrical art. No? So, tinuro niya yung, yung, yung Tagalog metrics sa mga Germans. And uh, that actually sparked interest in a lot of Germans to study Tagalog. Now, dumating si Viola si dumating si Viola sa Berlin ano and um she made niya si Vesal at ang kanyang novel uh, by providing loan no para ma-publish yung yung um novel. And the completion of Noli will mark Rizal solid step in inspiring a national consciousness among the Filipinos. We all know that. But one thing is uh for certain yung isang controversial chapter no sa Noli no Uh, ay sinasabing na alis dahil uh, sa kakulangan ng ng pera din to ano no to to print no? parang pumili si Vesal ng isang segment na kailangan niyang alisin now after that no um nagkaroon ng chance sa uh, si Vesal ma-travel lang Europe syempre sa tulong ni Viola so isinama siya ni Viola sa kanyang paglalakbay all over Europe and There, Rizal was able to visit a lot of places. So, una dito yung Leitz Meritz. So, dito niya nakita si Ferdinand Blumentritt, no? Sa Austria ito. And uh, uh, si Blumentritt ang isa sa mga magiging lifelong friend to Rizal, no? Not only in scholarship but in uh, life then. So, they also went to Prague in Czech Republic, in Vienna, in Austria. In Hungary, particularly sa Danube, okay, Linz, sa Rainfall, sa Geneva, Switzerland, and they even visited Rome and Vatican City. And as you can see, all of these markers, pictures of bust and um, statues of Rizal no, are all found in these places that I have mentioned. No? Um, these were either initiated by the local government of these um, areas or yung mismong Philippine Embassy yung um, nag-establish na gawa ng marker na for once Rizal went to this place. But it was not a simple tour. no. It was a very, very long tour kasi uh, they used the train no, to to go and reach these places. But none of these happy things will last longer as Rizal will eventually decide to go back to the Philippines. So it was his first homecoming and of course, his encounter with the Kalamba case. 1887 to 1888. Now, um, he was so excited to go back no, to the Philippines because you know it's been a long time and gusto niya na ulit makita yung Pilipinas. No? So hindi siya makatulog sa biyahe pabalik. Um, Marami din siya mga nakakwentuhan and he was telling them he was very excited to, you know, go back to the Philippines. 
Now, pagbalik niya ng Kalamba, he was celebrated by his townspeople, ano, considering na isa siya sa mga unang nakapag-aral sa Europe from that town and you know, went back and served as a doctor. So, tinupad niya yon, nag-practice siya ng medicine doon, nag-set up siya ng clinic, eye clinic, at ang unang kanyang pasyente, ang unang pasyente niya ay ang kanyang nanay na malapit na mabulag. Now, um, hindi nagtagal yung happy atmosphere, ano, kasi... Uh, yung no limitang heray ay nagkaroon na ng onting impact, nagkaroon na ng traction among the Spanish authorities and they were already keeping an eye on Rizal no? when he came back to the Philippines back then. So, pinatawag siya actually sa Malacanang dahil sa issues re- related to Noli. No? And uh, it was very vulgar for friars and the Spanish authorities to be presented in that fashion that they cannot accept the fact that Rizal wrote that, no? So there were a lot of malicious accusations against him and um nag uh, perpetuate ito sa pag pagkukuwento, no? Pagdadagdag ng no? paggagatong ng kanyang mga kaaway uh, by labeling him as a German spy, the agent of Bismarck, no? So agent daw siya nung uh, German leader na si Bismarck, Protestant siya, Mason daw siya meaning he was so anti-Catholic na he will do anything to topple down the Catholic Church. And his soul is beyond salvation. So he was considered a demon ano, for writing those things. And may masama pang nangyari no, kasi namatay yung kanyang kapatid na si Olympia. So isama pa natin dito yung issue sa Kalamba case at yung kanyang sigalot with the Dominicans as well as you know his encounters with um, the Spanish authorities. He did not settle for the Philippines that long because of the following reasons. Um, umalis siya kasi yung presensya niya sa Kalamba sobrang unsettling na sa mga taga doon at sa family niya na inaaraw-araw na sila ng Spanish authorities. So for him, na jeopardize yung safety and happiness ng mga kakilala niya. Second, uh, as he eventually fully recognized na he made enemies ano, for publishing that uh, novel, uh, para sa kanya mas makakapag makakapalag siya no uh, through free speech and magagawa niya lang yun kapag nandoon siya sa mga bansa na um, hindi siya kayang habulin ng mga Kastila so um, in a heartbeat he left for the he left the Philippines and decided to uh, travel once more right So at this juncture, uh, pag-uusapan na natin ano, yung pag-shift uh, ni Rizal from um, being a woke lang, no, person to being a radical. No? Ito yung kanyang second travel at yung kanyang pag-alis sa propaganda, 1888 to 1892. And you'll hear that from me on the next video. Stay tuned.